If you are an owner of an EC, you may be wondering what is the difference between selling at the 5-year mark versus the 10-year mark? And why are some ECs making losses while others are profiting at the same time? In this video, we'll be deep diving into these questions so you can understand when is the best time to sell for your particular EC. First, a quick recap on what is an EC aka executive condominiums. Now, the unique circumstances of owning one have a huge impact on its profitability at the 5 and 10 year mark. So ECs are a hybrid where they are built by private developers, but when they are first launched, they are considered public housing. So you get to enjoy the same amenities you would at a private condo, but at much more affordable prices. So who can apply for an EC? Not everybody, as there are certain criteria you need to fulfill feel very much like when you apply for a BTO. So for example, you need to have certain family nucleuses, an income ceiling cap, certain citizenship requirements, and you have to fulfill a 5-year MOP among other things. I've included the link to HDB site so you can have a more detailed look after this video. So what happens after 5 years? Now ECs become gradually privatized. So at the 5 year mark when they MOP, PRs are then also able to buy now as well as Singaporeans that don't fulfill any of the initial criteria. This means that singles, unmarried couples and those that exceed the income ceiling can now all buy without a 5 year MOP. And again at the 10 year mark, it becomes fully privatized where foreigners are able to buy as well. The question is, do they make more selling at the 5-year mark or the 10-year mark? Now, the 5-year mark, historically, we've seen majority of ECs make a healthy profit even during crisis periods. And this is due to two factors. The first is a much larger demand pool that is able to buy at MOP with less restriction and more spending power. And the second is a change in loan ratio. When you buy a brand new EC directly from the developer, the amount of loan you can take is assessed based on MSR, which is the mortgage servicing ratio. So this allows for only 30% of your income to go towards servicing debt. Versus if you buy a recent EC, it is assessed based on TDSR, which is the total debt servicing ratio. Now this takes into account a larger portion of your income. So for example, if today you can loan a million for a brand new EC, with the same income, you can loan about 1.843 million for a resale EC, which is close to double. This is why at the 5-year MOP mark, we see majority of ECs make healthy profits even up to a million because of the winning combination of a larger demand pool that is now able to buy as well as a higher spending power. With the consistent search at the 5-year mark, does that mean an even larger wave of price increase at the 10-year mark? Well, yes and no. This depends on when your EC was built. So historically, we've seen those that TOP before 2003 experience more growth at the 10-year mark versus those that TOP after. Let's take a closer look and understand why. This is Eastville, located in Pasiris. It is the first ever EC in Singapore, which TOP in 1999. We can see prices increase in 2004 at the 5-year mark and again in 2009 when it became fully privatized at the 10-year mark. However, shortly after, prices began to fall in 2013. Another development that experienced a similar pattern is Woodsville, which TOP in 2000. So again, we see at the 5-year mark, it increased and again at the 10-year mark before the drop in 2013 as well. So what happened in 2013 that caused prices to drop and how did it affect more recently built ECs. So in 2011, the government announced cooling measures and one of which was additional buyer stamp duty for foreigners. So in 2011, it was 10%. Three years later, they increased it to 15% in 2013 and again in 2018 to 20%. Now, most recently, it was tripled to 60% in 2023. Now, this ultimately reduced demand from foreigners as it impacted the return on investment, especially for resale ECs where they are buying into heartland areas at a much higher premium. Now, there's no guarantee that they can break even or it might take a much longer time. Here, we have La Casa, which TOP in 2000. 2008. Again, we see that at the 5-year mark, there was an increase in price. However, at the 10-year mark, when it became fully privatized in 2018, post three rounds of cooling measures, prices had declined and were stagnant. This is not to say that all ECs built post-2003 will stagnate or decline at the 10-year privatization mark. 
Here we have Esperina Residences and Privé, which both TOP in 2013. Now they just privatized last year and their prices are still growing strong. But if we take a closer look at the ownership pool, you will notice that there is no foreigner ownership for either. Instead of the price being fueled by influx of foreigner demand at privatization, it is due to demand and supply factors within the area from local and PR buyers, which is independent of the tenure your timeline. In conclusion, if you are a first-hand owner of an EC, it is ideal to sell within one to two years of your MOP to lock in your profits. Now, anything beyond that, do consider the market conditions as well as the supply and demand for your area. So if you're trying to figure out what is the best timing for your particular development and you require further analysis, you're welcome to reach out to me at any of the listed contacts and I'll catch y'all next time.